डॉक्टर अभय फिरोदिया साहब यहाँ भारतीय छात्र संसद के मंच पर हमारे विशिष्ट अतिथि हम उनका अभिनंदन करते हैं तालियों की कमी भारतीय छात्र संसद के मंच पर हो नहीं सकती शुक्रिया गुड इवनिंग टू द ऑनरेबल दायस टू द डिस्टिंग गेस्ट एंड माई यंग फ्रेंड्स आई बीन आस्ट टू स्पीक ऑन ग्रोथ फॉर ऑल एंड देर आर टू एलिमेंट्स इन दिस एज वी कैन रेडिली सी ग्रोथ आई एज्यूम इट मीन्स इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ इट मीन्स डेवलपमेंट एंड फॉर ऑल दैट वुड मीन इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ वेर एवरीबॉडी कैन हैव अ बेटर लाइफ दिस ब्रिंग्स मी टू अ फंडामेंटल कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन विच वी हैव टू लुक एट फर्स्ट our country in the last 60 years of independence shortly after the death of patel became a country driven by socialist ideology socialism is about distribution it is about distributing the existing pie whatever there is how do you cut it and give it it is not about growth market economics on the other hand free market economics is about growth so when we talk of growth for all we have to think very carefully and reflect first on what happened in our country whether it was right or wrong i strongly believe that the spiritual values the ethic of our society which in the century before independence was redeveloped by people like vivekanand who spoke of poverty alleviation of reaching out to the poor man tilak who gave us our confidence back again to say that freedom is my birthright men like tagore who spoke of the beauty of indian culture the poetry that he wrote evoked what is the best in our tradition and gandhi Gandhi was the most modern of them all and the most factual of them all Gandhi spoke of satyagraha which means insistence on truth without fear without favor not to resign from what what you think is true no matter what the consequences now this whole ethic which had evolved over 100 years of colonial rule was turned upside down by jawahar lal nehru within a few years of the passing away of gandhi and patel i strongly believe that this left turn was a great damaging move for india i am aware that i am saying something which is controversial which some may even say is heresy how can you say something which is blasphemous you are denouncing the policies of nehru yes i am if one cannot say it in the students parliament a democracy has no meaning one has to remember that it's very nice to talk about platitudes and yes there must be inclusiveness and there must be nice morality and all this 
This is not wrong. But this does not get you anywhere. If you want growth, and you want growth for all, first of all, you have to create wealth. How do you create wealth? And then you have to create a system whereby this wealth, which is created by a number of innovators, by a number of entrepreneurs, is created in a transparent, in an accountable, and in an honest manner. That is the challenge. How do you create wealth in a manner which is transparent, accountable, and honest? And to be able to do that, you need an economic regulatory system which promotes competition, which promotes accountability, and takes away the privilege from the powers that be, the bureaucracy and the politicians, and puts it in the hands of market forces and puts it in the hands of the system. That is precisely what free market economics is about. This is precisely what people like Anna Hazare have been saying, you bring accountability, you bring transparency. Please remember that there was no public sector in India before independence. None. The entire farming economy was private. The entire trade, wholesale and retail was private. The entire banking was private. At the height of labor governments in the UK, in the United Kingdom, in Britain, when very left socialists were ruling uh, the, the, the British politics, they did not nationalize banks. When we allowed our banks to be nationalized, our coal mines to be nationalized, we created a logjam which we are still fighting with. If you want to create wealth, you need organizations that can create wealth. Those organizations must be accountable, but they must exist. And if you subvert the organizations that exist, you pay the price for a long, long time. Probably the example I'm going to give you may be a bit jarring for you, but over the last few years, I've been thinking of this, and I strongly feel that 500 years ago, Akbar the Great, Akbar was not a Hindu, he was a Muslim, but Akbar created an inclusive society in India. He took people together. He respected the spirituality of the land. And he enabled growth to happen. He enabled society to be at peace and to flourish. Aurangzeb, his great-grandson, was no small a man. He was not a small man. He was a great fighter. But he was an extremely radical Muslim. He created in our country antagonism between sections of society. Today, a few hundred years after the event, we are able to see the difference between Akbar and Aurangzeb. We are too near in history today to see the difference between Gandhi and Nehru. But I strongly believe, and I'm accountable for what I say, that the kind of inclusive society, accountable society, moral society that these great men, Tilak and Gandhi and Vivekanand and Tagore envisaged, encouraged, was undermined by false promises. Socialism, to begin with, is materialistic. Mr. Tully referred to the amorality of the Western work ethic. Yes, socialism is highly materialistic. India is not a godless materialist country. Indians have a spiritual backbone. And turning away from this has been a very big setback for us. 
it is very nice to imagine that we will compete with China and we will be like the United States was in the 20th century. By the end of the 21st century, India will be a, a great economic power. But you are not getting there unless you set your economics in order first. One of the great tragedies of modern India is that the man who reversed this socialist train which was headed full speed in the wrong direction and made it into a journey into free market economics, that is Narasimha Rao, you hardly hear of him. There is not one politician of any stature in our country who has the courage of his convictions or the guts to stand up and say, Socialism was a mistake. Or who is ready to say, today's prosperity in India is the result of free market economics. You could not have had the telecom revolution. You could not have had the automobile revolution. You could not have had the building revolution without free market economics having been introduced in India. Technology is important, but technology is a means to an end. Technology evolves. Technology evolves best in a free society. There are any number of examples from the 20th century where you see all the great incubation centers for technology in the West like Bell Labs or NASA. They were part of an economic system that was free. If you look at the work the German scientists did in the 20th century in the field of chemistry or um, aircraft or rocket science or whatever, all of this happened where there was an economic impetus to achieve a breakthrough technology in order to harness it for common good ultimately. And I very strongly feel that we have lost our way in the last 40 years. On the other hand, you have the example of China. Deng Xiaoping, when he assumed power in China, took three basic decisions. First was he said, this communist philosophy of economics is bunkum, jettison it. He had the courage to say this is wrong. He said it in a very elegant manner. He said it doesn't matter whether the cat is black or white if it eats and if it kills mice. It's a nice way of saying it. But fundamentally what he was saying was if you want people to be prosperous, you have to create wealth. If free market economics creates wealth, so be it. He also brought in export competitiveness. So this is the first thing, economic reform. The second thing was he mandated that the Communist Party, which is communist only in name, will have an orderly succession. Every four years, there will be a succession, and every eight years, there will be a total change in leadership, ensuring that technocrats with good qualification, with good track record, are always in the front seat, always in the driver's seat, and they are young. And the third thing he insisted on and which he delivered on was he said do away with confrontational politics become friends with the west no revolutionary madcap thinking get practical get real in india a lot of politicians when they talk of the failure of the system to deliver goods for the people always say that we have democracy, we can't do this and we can't do that, and China has military dictatorship. It is true, China has military dictatorship. But this democracy in India can deliver a lot. Just look at two examples in the last 10 years, Gujarat and Bihar. The same laws, the same people, the same administrative system. Good governance has delivered. And I don't think we need to do anything except to attack. And that is what the youth can do. Attack the nexus between the decision makers in the bureaucracy 
and in the political system and the business. That nexus has to be attacked. I wonder whether the young girls who went to the Rashtrapati Bhavan gate and shook that gate understood that they were challenging the conscience of India to stand up to the mighty and say, you have to deliver. We will only understand its effect after maybe a decade. Today, when you read about Gandhi, you read about the Champaran Satyagraha. What was Champaran Satyagraha? It was a few hundred poor peasants being exploited by a number of colonial farmers. There were some English farmers who were suppressing them. It was a small thing, but it taught the people the power of the people. And it taught them that you stand up to injustice and you can get justice. That is what these young women did in Delhi. And that is what, that is what I think the youth of India can do. If we want growth for all, we have to correct our economics. And if we want to correct our economics, we have to break this nexus. And if we have to break this nexus, the youth have to say so. And I do hope that you people here, young people, who are interested in the future of our nation because you are going to have to live it, not my generation. We have a few years left. But you must stand up and demand that there is, first of all, growth. And then you can talk about growth for all. Thank you.